Welcome back to the Daily Mirror Pride of Britain Awards. Our final award tonight is for lifetime achievement. This lady has been a pioneer and an activist for over 40 years. She is a truly remarkable woman. I came into nursing in the late 1960s, and as a black nurse, I was very conscious that so-called black conditions w w were just not being addressed. I visited one mother at a time when her son was lying on the sofa, doubled up in pain. She was crying her eyes out, and she was asking me what could she do. I hadn't even heard of the illness. I couldn't help her. It, it really upset me, actually. It really did, because no child should suffer like that. Elizabeth was witnessing the impact of a genetic blood disorder that primarily affects African and Caribbean communities. It's known as sickle cell disease and causes extreme pain, organ failure, and even death. I was diagnosed with sickle cell at the age of three. I don't think it's a pain that you can ever, ever imagine. I remember my father was sitting next to me and I just looked at him in his eyes and said, Dad, do you think it would be better off if I had died or if I would die? Because it would just take this pain away. Despite sickle cell disease affecting thousands of people in this country, we knew nothing about it. We were taught nothing about it. Young people were dying with this illness. It was absolutely outrageous. The 60s and 70s were another country so far as clinical care of black people was concerned. We simply didn't exist. It was nothing short of scandalous. The NHS had to get to grips with this condition. I, I was fuming. I was so mad. Something had to change, and quickly. Elizabeth travelled to the US to study the disease and in 1979 became the UK's first sickle cell nurse specialist. She immediately sought funding to set up a sickle cell centre in Brent. Absolutely thousands of people contacted the centre. People were coming from the north of England, from Wales, but I couldn't believe it. People were desperate. You came to see me about something in particular. This went on on my own for six years. Just me. Determined to spread awareness, Elizabeth took to the road, launching a series of nationwide campaigns. I became the information officer for the newly formed Sickle Cell Society, and one of our campaigns was to write to every single MP in the country. This was about activism. She came into that situation as a clinician and as a black woman at a critical time. She couldn't be ignored. We were finally starting to break through. People were contacting me from up and down the country to set up similar centres. As a result, patients were accessing services more easily and they had a voice, a national voice, at last. How are you feeling? Thanks to Elizabeth, patients with sickle cell disease are now fully supported in the NHS with life-saving treatments. Elizabeth's campaigning also led to a national screening programme where every newborn in the UK has to be screened for sickle cell disease. Elizabeth's legacy, love. Love in action. Not as some soft sentiment, but as a strategy for change. If it wasn't for Elizabeth, I don't believe I would be here. Thank you, Elizabeth. Our Lifetime Achievement Award winner, Professor Jane Elizabeth Anyangu. And, and one where you're, you had this fierce anger about what was happening and you went out and you did something. Your work continues, doesn't it? I know that blood transfusions and blood donations is something that's very high on well, the agenda. Well, the, the NHS has now got sickle and thalassemia, another disorder, much higher on the agenda now. So uh, there's a cadre of sickle and thalassemia nurses. There's a combined um, campaign to recruit more donors 
from similar backgrounds. But I have to say, one of the many reasons I'm pleased to be here is that it's giving an opportunity for sickle cell to have a much higher profile, and I'm really pleased about that. And obviously you're a huge supporter of the NHS. Yes, definitely. Yes, yes. and the care and the love that comes yes. from that. And I'm... Hold on. I can't do maths like you. Uh, but, um, <laughs> a year older than the NHS. So it means a lot to me. I've grown up with it, and it's helped me enormously. Now, we're talking about numbers, and we wanted uh, to find a way to express the numbers of people that you and your work has specifically helped in the UK. So if everybody could get their phones out. Oh, my goodness. You see this sea of lights? Mm. Every single one represents more than 30 people whose lives you have helped. And all together, it's over 25,000 people. Gosh. And we just want to say thank you on behalf of all the people these lights represent mm. to you, Professor Dame Elizabeth Anyon. Thank you so much. To present your award, she sold over 100 million records worldwide, and she herself has championed civil rights and female empowerment. Please welcome Miss Janet Jackson. <laughs> When I heard your story, I connected with your passion in breaking down the barriers of inequality. You've turned shame and prejudice into to strength and service. And I am here tonight to just say thank you. Thank you for being such an incredible woman and giving us hope. It really is an honor for me to present you with this Lifetime Achievement Award. Congratulations. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. And congratulations once again to the amazing Professor Dame Elizabeth Anyon Roof. Before we meet all of this year's winners for one last time, I want to say from the bottom of my heart what a complete privilege it's been for me over 20 years to meet every single one of our Pride of Britain heroes. You have all changed so many lives with all that you've done, including mine. And I just want to say thank you. Now,